Holy guac, guys. So I have already kind of alluded to the fact that I was going to have a very special guest on the podcast, but I didn't fully unveil all of the majesty and all the majesticness. And so I am seriously so incredibly excited because this is something that I talk about. It's something that I've alluded to, as I've mentioned, but we have never gone full in on the legal side of email marketing. And so I am seriously so incredibly excited to have a very special friend in here. Her name is Lane. She's about to blow your mind, absolutely blow your mind. And so Lane, thank you so much for being here. Please dive in, tell us a little bit about you. Um, and I mean, just share your awesomeness. Aw, thank you, Ashley. And I am so excited to be here too. You know, we've been planning this for a little while, so I am really excited. Hi, everyone who's listening. I'm <laughs> Lane Lyons. I'm a lawyer and a legal expert for women entrepreneurs. And that means that I help women grow their businesses by using the proper legal foundations. So what does that mean? Well, I believe that when you're in fear, you can't grow. So if you're sending out your emails, doing your email marketing and all the things, and you're looking over your shoulder, worrying in anywhere in your business, that something that you are doing or not doing, or something that you're saying or not saying is going to come back and bite you in the buns. <laughs> you are not going to be able to grow the business of your dreams. You're going to hold back. You're going to, you're not going to even hit send, right? Yeah. So my whole jam is helping you get powerful, confident with your business, know exactly what legal protections you need. I make it super, super simple. Look, we both know that legal stuff can be overwhelming and even sometimes a little intimidating, right? So I make it super straightforward, really, really simple. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to dive into the incredible world of email marketing, and we're yep. going to keep it really simple and help you keep it legal. Yeah, which is so incredibly important. And it also too, it's just something that a lot of times we don't even think about because it's not really even talked about. So I would love to just dive on in, especially into kind of like your scope of practice. I think this is something that, again, we just are like, okay, you know, we think about the subject line, we think about the text, we think about the images, but we never really honestly, and this is from coming from somebody who like writes emails all day long, it's about the scope of practice about like with every single email you send out, talk to me more about that. Like, what does that process look like? What should I have front of mind before I even get to the point of writing my emails? Absolutely. And I know that subject lines are super sexy yeah. and your disclaimer <laughs> and your scope isn't, but we're going to, we're going to talk about it today. And I'm going to hopefully make it at least a little bit fun. Just as we're getting started, quick reminder, the information I'm going to share with you today is not legal advice. It's information and education for you to use as you make your email marketing super sassy and you take it to the next level. And it's not going to be a substitute for speaking to a local lawyer who can advise you on your specific situation, but I promise you it is going to be super, super helpful. Yes. That All right. awareness that, is key. Yeah. 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 With that out of the way, let's talk about scope. You brought up a great point, Ashley. So you need to establish your scope on every single, your scope of practice on every single email that you send out. And what exactly is scope? Scope is what your audience, what your clients and your email readers can rely on your information for and what they can't rely on it for. Let's break that down a little bit. Let's say that you are a business coach or a, a virtual assistant and you're helping somebody in the money area of their business. You're helping somebody increase their productivity. You're helping them hopefully have a more successful business. Mm -hmm. But it's really important in your scope and in your disclaimer to make it super clear that working with you is not a guarantee of future earnings. Mm -hmm. Working with you is not a guarantee of results, right? See how it's possible. We're talking about the confusion here. It's possible that somebody who reads your awesome sales page where it says, I'm going to 10X your income by working with me, that's fine to have that in your marketing. But we want to make it clear that working with you is not a guarantee of future earnings. If you're a health coach, we want to make it clear that you do not heal, cure, diagnose, or treat any illness, that you're not a doctor or a nurse or a naturopath. And if you're, let's say, uh, a life coach, we want to make it clear that working with you isn't a substitute for therapy. Yeah. Why? 
Why, why, why is this so important? Because licensed practitioners, like I was mentioning, doctors, lawyers, uh, CPAs, licensed business professionals, licensed health professionals, licensed mental health professionals, those women are all held to a different standard than coaches, consultants, and unlicensed service-based business practitioners. So we want to make sure that you're making your scope clear because we want to make sure, again, that everyone understands what they can use your information for, and sometimes more importantly, what they can't use your information for because we want to avoid somebody using or misusing your information, having a negative result or, or no result, and then coming back to blame you for that result. This is all about the scope, people. So how do we do it? We use, I use something with my private clients in my law firm called a mini disclaimer. So this is the nitty gritty nuts and bolts of the language that set, it's a full paragraph that you, you can stick it at the bottom of your emails. I'm happy if you scrunch it down to a smaller font. Yeah. If you want to make it italics, if you want to just squeeze it there at the bottom, we don't want this. This is not as important as this, as the content of the email. Mm -hmm. This is certainly not as sexy as we said, as the subject line, <laughs> this is not as cute. This is not as cute as the emojis, but yeah. it's even more important in times because we want to make sure that that scope is clear so that nobody can use your information, have a negative result and come back and blame you. So it's all about the scope. So we want this mini disclaimer, what I call a mini disclaimer. Mm -hmm. We want this language on every email you send out. We want it on your website. We want it on your social media groups, all of your social media presence, everywhere that you are showing up online, you need to establish your scope of practice. And it is super important to have it on your emails. I recommend just like you've got your cute and sassy signature at the bottom, take your mini disclaimer. I sell it as a standalone package. It's a hundred dollars currently. I'm not sure when this episode will air, but it's a hundred dollars. I sell that as a standalone item. Mm -hmm. You're going to take that mini disclaimer and add it to your signature so that you're not even having to think about establishing your scope. It's there on every email that you send out. It doesn't have to be on your scheduler, right? Yeah. The fact that you're going to meet up at 6 PM on a Wednesday, that, <laughs> and we don't need that. But if you're giving any kind of information or education, what sometimes is called advice in any of your emails, we want that disclaimer there so that the person reading it has been put on notice what they, what she can and can't use that information for. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? That totally makes sense. You know, as you were talking, it reminds me of like the old game of telephone. You know, when you would like have like the first message and then you whisper it to somebody else and then whisper it to somebody else and like it goes around. And by the time it goes around the circle, you could have said, I love my mom. And now it's, I love my grandpa kind of thing, you know? And I think <laughs> that's like the biggest thing is, is that like so often, like, like information is interpreted in so many different ways, as you mentioned. And I think it's so incredibly important to make sure that you have those kinds of things in place to make sure that like, Hey, like, no, like I'm setting the standard because you don't want someone to come along and be like, well, I'm setting the standards here. Like I'm going to set it, how it's going to go. And I think it makes a huge difference. Um, especially when it comes to GDPR, I feel like when we got into the first phase of GDPR, everyone was like, um, what does this stand for? What does this even mean? Like, what am I even supposed to do? And I would love to segue into GDPR because I feel like this is, again, something that was a huge hype. Everyone that suddenly became an expert in it so they could offer services around it. And now everyone, I feel like the, the kind of the, um, the hype, I feel like has died down, but the importance hasn't. So I would love to hear about like, what you recommend in terms of a GDPR, what should people be doing? Is it just as simple as making sure that you know, certain people opt in versus not like, give me the deets on this. Yeah, absolutely. And let me preface this by saying California is going, you know, we're, we're US based companies yeah. and California is going to be coming out with a new privacy policy. Likely this year, it was scheduled for 2020, but then COVID hello. Mm -hmm. So everything was put on the back burner, but California is going, California is the leader often in these internet privacy rules. We have like CALOPA, which is a California privacy act, which applies to the entire country. So yeah. if it applies to California, it applies to everyone. And so heads up everyone, GDPR, which is currently for the U European Union, for the EU, you've seen that everywhere. 
yeah. is you, we kind of got a little bit of a slide from May of 2018 till sometime in 2021 for all of us to get caught up. But I will just advise that in 2021, hope your fingers crossed here from, from the legal department, <laughs> in <Yeah>. 2021, <laughs> there will be a new California email privacy law opt-in privacy law. So we're going to all have to be compliant with that. So this is really great timing for all mm -hmm. of us to make sure that we're already understand GDPR because the California law promises to be as stringent or potentially even one step further, right? We, we yeah. Americans always have to outdo everyone, right? Bigger, right. <laughs> bigger and better, bigger and better here in the U.S. So wink, wink. So, okay, let's talk GDPR. There are certain things that are important for us to be doing with our email marketing. Mm -hmm. The most important thing is that you have a privacy, a GDPR compliant privacy policy. I also have a privacy policy for my private clients. I recommend that you get one drafted by a lawyer, one who specifically understands service-based businesses like coaching and consulting and other service-based businesses, because it's a different ball game over here. So I definitely recommend that you have that drafted by someone who understands what industry we're in and the unique exposures and pitfalls that we face. All right, so now you've got this GDPR compliant and soon to be California Privacy Act compliant privacy policy. What the heck do you do with this thing? So <laughs> one, <laughs> you, you have it as a link in the footer of your website. Why? Why do you have this on your website? And I'm also gonna clue you into some other places where you want your privacy policy link as well. Why? So the law says, if you have any visitors coming into your website from California and you have anything on your website where you collect personal information from other people, then you must have a privacy policy. That's the current law without even the changes. What does that mean? Well, everyone who has a website here in the US that's open for business potentially has visitors onto your website from California. We can't, of course, dictate who comes to our website. So as long as soon as your website goes into what we call interstate commerce, meaning it's available for anyone in multiple states, not just your state, to yeah. be visiting it, then we've got to comply. We've got potentially California visitors. That's part one. Part two, if you're collecting any personal information, well, what is personal information? So it turns out just a little old email is personal <laughs> information. So yeah. if you're collecting their name, their email, any other information beyond that is just gravy. What do I mean collecting information? So two common ways that we see this. One, a contact me page, right? Usually the, the seventh page on a seventh page website is yeah. contact me. You've got a box. You've got a box there with a field that says name, even if it's just their first name, email address. And you may even have a box that says message, which is even more significant because somebody could put a message in there like my business is drowning or my health is and my health is in the tank and so yeah. we're collecting information but again just an email alone is enough to trigger this so if you're collecting information on your contact page or even more common handy dandy little opt-ins mm -hmm. an opt-in you're giving something of value a handout a checklist a video in exchange right here it comes in exchange for someone's email and first name yeah there you go bing 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 the trigger has gone off now you have a website that is potentially being seen by visitors from california and you're collecting personal information so mm -hmm. what is a girl to do well <laughs> right well i already mentioned we're going to have that gdpr compliant lawyer drafted coach understanding privacy policy in the footer of your website as a link. Yeah. But the law also says that every place where you are just about to collect personal information right below that little handy submit button, you've got to have a link to your privacy policy. Why? Mm -hmm. I love the why. The why is because the law says we've got to give our users what's called informed consent. Consent, of course, means, yes, I want to opt into your list. Mm -hmm. Informed means I've read or had the opportunity to read your privacy policy. So I'm educated and I know what information you're collecting from me, how you use that information, how you store it, how you share it, and very most, most important, how I can opt out if I want. 
So right where you right in the same box, that same cute box that you've spent so much time with all the adorable marketing, creating your opt-in pop-up or your opt-in on your webpage, right, right below the submit button, you're going to have a little line of text and it can be totally straightforward or it can be cheeky. And you can go to my website. My website is lanelyons.com. Lane has a Y and Lyons has a Y. We'll have that in the show notes. LaneLyons.com. I use my website really in large part as a teaching tool to mm -hmm. show my clients how to set things up, how to, how to, how to add their things, all the things, how to do it correctly. So right there, right before you're about to let them hit submit with their name field and their email field, you want to have a line of text again, can be straightforward. It can say, we respect your privacy, read all about it here. And then the word here is a link back to that same GDR compliant privacy policy. Or you can be as cute as you want. You can say, you know, no spam, not even in a can, or, you know, we love, we love spam. We, whatever it is, right. You can yeah. be as cute as you want, but you've got to have that link there. Again, the issue is informed consent informed because they've had an opportunity to read your privacy policy and understand what you're doing with their personal information. Once you gather it from them. So that's really the big thing that that's that's the hot ticket right now with GDPR is making sure that you've got that privacy policy link anywhere that you're just about to give your people an opportunity to hit submit and give you their information. Yeah, so incredibly crucial. And this also, you know, goes into the whole double opt-in thing as well, too. I think this is a huge thing that a lot of people are just like, okay, like I, I and I honestly get this question all the time. They're like, do I need double opt-in? Does it make sense? And, you know, from an email marketing standpoint, like as a strategist, you know, so often the double opt-in emails actually end up in spam and the percentage of people who end up, unfortunately, and this is like platforms across the board. Like I've seen that just like, they're just like, I, I never got the opt-in. So I never got the emails and then they never move forward. So talk to me about your viewpoint. I mean, cause like, I, I mean, on my side, I'm like, I hate double opt-ins. Like I absolutely hate them. But I mean, from a legal standpoint, I mean, give me the juice here because like, I know again, it, it could be like, yeah, I get it, Ash. Like I understand. But then at the same time, like we need to be compliant over here too. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. And I love that. And, you know, from the marketing standpoint, if I can just add my understanding and I'm, you're the marketing guru, not me, but we want people on our list who really want to be there. So that, right, who, because we don't just want to fill our list with numbers, we want to have actual like potential pre-clients on our list and clients. So having that double opt-in just gives one more uh, fail safe to get those people who really want to be on your list. So mm -hmm. that's like, a, that's like a little way to, um, what do you call that? Like a spoonful of sugar yeah. <laughs> to, to help the medicine go down right there. So double opt-ins, they're not mandatory, not yet. They probably will be when the new California Privacy Act comes out. They probably will be. So again, great practice to get this going now, to spend the time now so that nobody is scrambling the, the week or the month that the uh, act comes out and goes into law. Yeah. But so they're not mandatory, but they are definitely the best practice. What's really important with the GDPR and this whole consent thing, right? We were talking about consent. Somebody's got mm -hmm. to give you informed consent what they've also got to give you is affirmative consent, meaning they actually took an action to say, I want to be on your list. And yeah. a big way that we prove that they've taken action, if it ever comes into question, is you've got those records of double opt-ins. If anybody who has double opt-in, you have no issues with proving affirmative consent. You mm -hmm. have no issue because you can show that they took action. Anybody who doesn't have a double opt-in, well, how are you going to show? Well, you got to do that maybe more tricky thing, which is having a checkbox, you know, below your, you, that, that was a big style back in 2018 when the GDPR first came out is a lot of checkboxes right below, you know, yeah. I want to join your list. And then a checkbox of, I want to receive uh, your, you know, your newsletter as well. Well, that's an affirmative consent. I personally feel that double opt-ins are a more fun way, a more, more reliable way, because somebody can opt in without, without it, they can opt in to get your freebie, but not check the box. Yeah. Another little twist about it. And this may be a little complicated to explain over a podcast. So again, I invite you to go check out my website. You can see how I've set it up because I've set it up with the twist. Here's the twist. You can say, let's say, let's just say that your opt-in is going to be um, five free smoothie recipes. 
mm -hmm. right? Like five free smoothies for total energy. Well, it, before GDPR, we were all saying like, hey, get my five free smoothies. And then the person would opt in yeah. and then they would suddenly be added to your newsletter list, to your email marketing list. GDPR, a lot of people did what I just talked about with the checkbox, which is get my five free smoothies and you have to check the box. I also want to be added to your newsletter. Mm -hmm. A little workaround that we've developed here in the legal community is I want to be added. I want to receive our health. Let's go back to our health coaching op, op example with the five free smoothies. Mm -hmm. I want to receive five free smoothies and weekly tips on how to keep my energy up. Or you yeah. can lead with, I want to receive weekly tips to keep my energy up and five for, and an awesome five free smoothie booklet. See how I did that? I flipped yeah. them. So either way, you're letting them know before they hit submit that they're not just getting those five free smoothies. They're also getting your newsletter. You're telling them, you're informing them prior to that point of, you know, checkout, we can call it prior yeah. to the point of checkout, exactly what they're collecting. So double opt-ins are, you see all of these, all of these ways, they kind of become a little bit more uh, complicated. Double opt-ins are starting to seem like the more streamlined, easier option now when we think about all the other workarounds. So oh, yeah. I love a double opt-in. You can make your secondary page where they need to click to confirm their subscription. That's an opportunity for branding. That's an opportunity to be cheeky and fun. And for yeah. you, you can always customize that and you can put a picture of yourself. You can put like, you know, something to let your, your new subscribers know a little bit more about you. So that's just yeah. an opportunity for them to like really want to get on your list. Yeah, no, I love that. And I love the uh, difference of positioning. It's all about positioning guys. I think, especially, you know, as of right now, when I have uh, my email, so right now I'm fully transparent what I do and all the things right now. It's just like a single opt-in um, because I have the records of them giving me their email address and a spreadsheet with the time and the date and all that. And then when they get into my actual EMS system, then that also tracks like, okay, cool. This is where they came from. But within that also too, I think it's really important because I'll put in there like, Hey, like this is your email, like with the freebie and all the things, but here's what's coming up next. And I think what that does is that not only sets a tone, but then it also gives you that opportunity to be like, okay, cool. Like this is for me or this isn't for me. Um, and so I love how you reposition that in order to be able to be like, Hey, like this is what to expect. You're very clear. You're very upfront. And I find that like, that is so needed, especially in, you know, the marketing, the legal, all of the spaces actually. Yeah. And when we can have that convergence of being clear, legal and fun, that's the sweet spot. Exactly. A hundred percent. Oh my gosh, this has been seriously so much fun as we have gone through so much information, guys. There is so much that, I mean, there's, there's so much more. There's literally so much more in terms of with the legal sides of, of having a business that I know I've been in the process of discovering and being able to really understand. Um, because I, as I, as you all know, I love writing emails. I love being creative. I love doing all the things. And while I did take a business law class, that definitely was not enough uh, when I was in college and didn't cover half of this stuff. Um, and it's constantly changing and evolving. So having somebody just like you in our corner is so incredibly valuable. And I absolutely love exactly what you do. So can you please share um, exactly more so of what you do, what you have offering wise, and also where people can find you? Yeah, I would love to. I would love to. And yeah, I'm so happy to support your community. This is what I love to do most. I've been a lawyer for 26 years and I've landed in the last several into this world of working with service-based businesses and women in business. And I just love it. I hope you can hear I'm enthusiastic and passionate about <laughs> helping women get all, make this legal stuff really straightforward. Yep. So for anyone who's been listening to the episode and is like, Ooh, I might need to get this handled. I invite you to go to my website, lanelions.com and go to the checklist. You can just go straight to lanelions.com slash checklist. This is a checklist that's going to tell you exactly which legal documents you need in your business. It's broken down into if you have a website, this is what you need. If you work with other people, this is what you need so that it's really, really straightforward because I know this stuff, there's so much information out there. And if, if we Google, we're going to get a lot of conflicting information. So we've really broken it down, made it super simple. So for those of you listening, go grab the checklist. But for anybody listening who is getting that tingling feeling in their toes thinking, oh my gosh, I needed to handle my legal stuff like yesterday. I invite you to book a call. 
super easy. You can just go to bookwithlane.com and get on a call with me. We'll take a deep dive into your specific business. I'll help you identify exactly the places where your specific business is vulnerable. And then together we'll craft the exact plug for you to plug that up. I use contracts to do that. I make them all very, very straightforward. So we can use contracts. Some of you may be ready for trademarks. We can talk about that. Some of you may be ready for an LLC. I'm happy to get on the phone with all of you with this amazing audience of women and help you get your business up to up, buttoned up and caught up and set up for success so that you can have that peace of mind to move forward and really grow the business that you've been dreaming of. Yeah. And let me tell you what, guys, I had hopped on a call with her and I was just blown away. I was totally blown away when I was talking with you because I was just like, I didn't even think that was a thing. There were so many things that I was just like, I mean, I don't have a criminal mind, but what in the world? <laughs> you know, there's just, this, <laughs> you know, and I think that's where a lot of us get stuck. And especially with so many of us, we're just like, I never thought X, Y, Z would happen. And so that's where you come into play. You're just like, I've already thought of X, Y, Z. Like I have that brain. Like I know exactly what these people are thinking and I know how to make you covered. So gosh, thank you so incredibly much for coming on here, sharing your amazingness. And guys, I highly, highly recommend popping on a call with her, um, getting all of her energy and just really kind of going in and doing the things. Thank you so much for having me. And thanks everyone for listening. Perfect. Awesome. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us on another episode and I will see you guys on the next one.